My name is David Moore. I am a security engineer on the Looker product security team. Okay, so I'm going to start out and just go over what we're going to cover in today's talk a little bit. We're going to have a, first of all, a, a very high level uh, security overview, high level discussion of how Looker secures your data. We're going to talk about what we call our shared security partnership. And so that real briefly is what Looker does to offer security and what we ask our customers do uh, in terms of security. We'll go over data security and some of our compliance frameworks, product security, and we'll wrap up things uh, talking about cloud security. Okay, so Looker was architected for data security from the start. Our founders were very security conscious and they made some very early design decisions which contributes to Looker security today. So the first one is that Looker sits on top of your existing database and the data stays there. So it doesn't move to another place where it's stored for a long time and potentially exposed, it just stays in your database and we'll query it from there. Another really important point is that Looker offers a single point of access for your data. And this is a really important concept just from a business perspective because it gives you a single source of truth about your data. However, it also offers a big security gain as well because once there's a single point of contact, it can be managed and controlled in terms of the access. And that really leads to our third point, uh, administrators can set very granular positions on who can see what, who can see what data within Looker in terms of what role they're in, what group they're in. So there's complete control over who can see your data. One important aspect of Looker security is that we analyze your data where it lives. We ensure data security by limiting um, how much it moves around and where it goes to. So we query the data within your database directly from Looker. Now, also, whenever we do any of these queries and whenever data does move anywhere, and we'll talk about this in a little more depth later, it's always encrypted. We always use industry standard encryption every time data is in motion. Okay, so the next thing to talk about is authentication and access control. So this is how can anyone access your Looker instance? And once they have, what data can they see specifically? So in terms of authentication, um, the important point to mention is that we support two-factor authentication to Looker. And so this provides an authentication mechanism beyond just a password to secure the access to your Looker instance. This protects against attacks like phishing or any kind of credential exposure um, because people or anyone logging into Looker has to offer more than just a password. They have to have another factor to log in. Um, another thing that we offer is we have full integration with LDAP and also industry standard single sign-on mechanisms as well. So once people are authenticated into Looker, we also offer fine grain access control. I've talked about this a little before, but there's three levels of this access control that I wanna talk about. One is on the data model itself. For any given data model, you can control who can access that data model. And then more generally, you can set up groups and roles within Looker um, where you assign certain permissions and access abilities to each of those. And then you can put different users into those respective groups and roles. So this gives complete and fine-grained and centralized control of who can access what data. Looker offers complete and comprehensive monitoring and auditability across the system. Because we have a single point of access for your data, that means that it's easy to track user activity. There's only one mechanism for accessing data if you use Looker across the board. And so that means that any access to your data is completely audited. There's an audit trail. And so any activity that happens is going to be logged and going to be discoverable after the fact. And so this offers a deterrence to any kind of activity within Looker. Um, it offers essentially what we call in the security industry non-reputability. You, re you cannot deny, no user can deny that they did anything. So everything is tracked and monitored in terms of user activity. The platform can also be configured to alert to any kind of um, unusual activity as desired. So this is a mechanism that Looker administrators can set up, uh, meaning customer Looker administrators can define any kind of activity within their Looker instance that they consider interesting or should be flagged. Um, and then they will be alerted if any of that activity actually comes to pass. And then finally, um, in terms of the data model, um, that is also tracked. The changes to the data model is tracked in the source code control system, Git. And just to talk about the data model itself, that is the queries, that is the look ML. Um, that look ML is code and it itself is managed uh, via Git. Now all this happens in the background, um, your Looker instance handles all this, but the important point is that any changes to the data model as well will be tracked, uh, will be monitored, and can be discovered after the fact. 
I want to switch gears here and talk about our shared security partnership. So this is, um, I'm going to outline what Looker does to secure the Looker instance, and also what we ask of our customers, what our customers' responsibilities are to secure their Looker instance. So first of all, we handle product security, cloud security, as well as our corporate and physical security. What we ask of our customers is a few things. So first of all, we need Looker to connect to your analytics database, your database with your corporate data in it. And so that connection has to be done in a secure manner. It's very straightforward to do that. In fact, I'll say with all these responsibilities, they're all completely documented. There's extensive examples, uh, and it's actually designed uh, specifically to be very straightforward and easy to set up. So enabling secure database access, uh, that itself is uh, uh, one of the things we ask of you. The next two are pretty closely related, setting up that fine grain, grain control over what users can do what. Setting up the roles, setting up the groups, uh, that's something that Looker asks our customers to handle. Closely related is that third bullet point where we say, we strongly suggest that you set up the most restrictive permissions for a given user. And that is the security idea of least privilege. Uh, no user should have permissions or the ability to see data beyond what they need to do their job or for their role as well. And then finally, we have, um, we have some customers, a fair amount of our customer base uses Looker's API only. They don't use the Looker front end. Uh, they write their own front end. And so they're making API calls from those front ends. And so we ask that uh, how you make those API calls uh, is also set up in a secure manner. Okay, so the next section is around data security. And I'm going to talk about uh, our uh, regulatory frameworks in terms of compliance, as well as how we encrypt data. We support uh, compliance with several compliance frameworks. Um, we've done extensive work both to get these frameworks initially, as well as to maintain them. And this means extensive audits, penetration tests, maintenance of security controls. And, and this is all ongoing. We typically have to update many of these on a quarterly basis. These are the ones we're supporting right now. Uh, we are working on others as well. So look for this list to expand in the future. Another extremely important aspect of data security is encryption. And uh, your data in Looker is encrypted at all times, both in transit and at rest. So first of all, uh, sensitive application data, uh, including things like your database credentials, any query data as well is always encrypted. And I, I wanna take a quick aside here and talk about the fact that we do sometimes briefly cache query data within Looker. Uh, and so that's the only time that your data exists in Looker outside of um, uh, your analytics database. So we do cache query data briefly. Um, now, even when it's cached, it is encrypted using AES, Advanced Encryption Standard. Uh, and the length of time that the data is in that cache, or even if it's cached at all, it's completely configurable um, by administrators of a Looker instance. Um, another thing to talk about is the hop from between the user's browser to the Looker instance and back again. That connection is always encrypted via TLS 1.2, which is the latest encryption standard for HTTP communications. Looker instance uh, usernames and passwords. So these are the credentials that Looker users use to log into the Looker instances. So obviously very sensitive information. We do store this in the Looker instance and it is uh, stored according to industry standards. We are properly and completely hashing and salting uh, those credentials. And we also use a key derivation function called bcrypt which is designed specifically to be very hard to brute force, to make a brute force attack against, because bcrypt happens to actually run deliberately slow. So it's very hard to brute force uh, anything in bcrypt. However, with our hashing and salting, it's uh, virtually impossible. And then finally, Looker enables you to configure the other hop of the data. And so this is between uh, the Looker instance and your database in both directions. Uh, that hop of the data is also completely encrypted using again, either TLS 1.2, or if you wish, you can use um, Secure Shell SSH. Okay, so that was how we secure your data, a little bit about data security. Uh, now I'm gonna talk about product security. So the first thing to point out is that our code development happens according to a documented software development lifecycle process. And there's many aspects of this, but the most important one I wanna point out is that we perform security reviews on all new features that are put into Looker. And this is all new features that follow a set of criteria where they have security implications. And so what this means is that anytime there's a new feature uh, in Looker, the security team, this is the security team I'm on, the product security team, we will work with product managers and lead engineers uh, early in the process to make sure that the 
design is a secure design. Whatever design they're using for the feature, we make sure there's um, that it's completely secure. There's no security issues around it. If we see anything, then we'll make suggestions. We'll say, hey, here's how you can um, implement this feature in a more secure manner. So we do this early in the process. We also do it later in the process too. Like we check everything before it's actually released and once it's implemented again to make sure that it's free of security vulnerabilities as well. Okay, so our code is also peer reviewed before it's checked into the main branch. And that means that any change has to be reviewed by at least one other Looker engineer before it can be checked in. And one of the things that the Looker engineers are tasked with, uh, with doing when they do this kind of review is looking for any security issues with the code as it's being checked in. We regularly train our developers on secure coding practices. And this training is, uh, has a few aspects to it. First of all, we train on general security concepts and best practices. And then we talk about specific vulnerabilities. Um, we talk about what's called the OWASP top 10 web security vulnerabilities. And we also look specifically at vulnerabilities we've had in Looker in the past and how to avoid uh, repeating them in the future. We have um, a bug bounty program. We have uh, a security vulnerability reporting program via Google's VRP. And this means that independent security researchers can check Looker for security vulnerabilities. And if they find one, they'll report it to Google VRP and we will check it, we'll verify it, uh, we'll fix it, and we will reward them. So this is another mechanism where we can find out about security vulnerabilities within Looker. Uh, we perform extensive and frequent third-party penetration tests against Looker. And many of these are done in accordance with the regulatory frameworks I mentioned earlier, and others are mandated um, by corporate requirements. And so Looker is very extensively and frequently penetration tested and then finally, we run uh, extensive automated security tests on the Looker code and the Looker application before any code is released. And these check for, in general, the most sec uh, severe security vulnerabilities. And so this allows us to find vulnerabilities using automated tools before they are released into the mainstream. And then the final area I wanna talk about is our cloud security. And so the first important point to make here is that Looker inherits the very robust security of all the cloud platforms that we run on. So Looker is a multi-cloud product and we run on GCP, Azure, and Amazon's AWS. And each of these cloud providers has very extensive security uh, across their stacks. And so given that we run on top of those, we inherit that security. Um, another aspect of Looker's cloud security is that we run proxy servers in front of every Looker instance. And this allows us to do things like throttling against a denial of service attack. And it also allows Looker customer administrators to um, offer IP deny listing. That means that they can specify um, what IP addresses can and uh, cannot connect to Looker. So this adds another layer of defense in depth uh, to your Looker instance. Now, both the Looker front end application and the back end infrastructure are regularly scanned for known security vulnerabilities. So I mentioned this before in terms of the Looker application, but it's important to point out too that the, the virtual machines, the VMs, the operating systems, all aspects of the Looker stack are regularly scanned for known security vulnerabilities. And then finally, logs across the entire Looker production environment are maintained and collected and stored. And this gives the ability to monitor and alert for any ongoing uh, security event or to forensically understand what happened after the fact, if need be. Okay, and so that concludes a little bit about how Looker secures your data. I hope you've enjoyed this talk. Thank you very much.